Uh, what, what, what other observation also do you make, especially from the proceedings of the court, the ruling subsequently, and the actions that should have been taken by the speaker thereof? So, the speaker is talking about Article 2. Now, no. at the time that the, speaker, the, 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 the Chief Justice, Chief Justice mm. is speaking mm. about Article 2, I'm submitting that at the time the Supreme Court, no, at the time the writ was filed in the Supreme Court, the Supreme Court had no jurisdiction to hear this matter. Again, at the time the writ was filed at the Supreme Court, the Supreme Court had no jurisdiction. And if you have no jurisdiction from the beginning, you can't have jurisdiction in the middle of the case. Now, read Article 2, 1. Read Article 2, 1 for it. Uh, Article 2, 1. A mm -hmm. person who alleges... A, an enactment or anything contained in or done under the authority of that or any other enactment or any act or omission of any person is inconsistent with or is in contravention of a provision of this constitution may bring an action in the Supreme Court for a declaration to that effect. So at the time Afenio Markin filed his suit, what did the speaker do? Did he do anything? Are you getting it? Did the speaker do anything? So if your foundation is weak, your superstructure cannot be strong. You think, you think um, the Supreme Court didn't They got it to wrong. Be... Look, the fact that the Supreme Court speaks doesn't mean that the Supreme Court is right. It's just that the Supreme Court is the last court. And I, I have always said that. But for FIFA and CAF, don't you think that our government and the sports ministry have said that our sports students were up to standard. The two issues are not contemporary. They are contemporary because if we had a superior international body, they would have been striking down what the Supreme Court does. Are you now, are you now understanding me? I get because you. our internal activities in our courts are not subject to a superior international body, they get away with some of these things. So I have submitted again that... The Supreme Court didn't have jurisdiction at the time so you're that saying, the writ was filed. So you're saying that if it was so back if, in the day where we had the Privy Council, we would have petitioned the Privy Council? Yes. To strike what the Supreme Court has done. Now, if the Supreme Court had no jurisdiction and went ahead to do what it did, must the Speaker... Which was? Which is to injunct uh, the, the, the man. Must the speaker obey it? Some say yes, he should obey it. But he then went back to court to have it set aside. The Supreme Court refused. I knew they were going to refuse. But what, what you are actually telling them was that they are not competent. You, you, the effect of setting aside what they did was to tell them that you are not competent. And who agreed to that? Which father who agreed for his son to say, Papa, you are not competent. So the effect of speaker's application was to tell the Supreme Court that you are, you are wrong, you are incompetent, you don't know the law. They will protect themselves. So it's not as if because they rule, they did the right thing. Next point. Next point. So if the Supreme Court had no jurisdiction beginning, it can't have jurisdiction at the middle of the case. That's my submission. The next one is Article 90 now. If both the Supreme Court and the High Court have concurrent jurisdiction, where do you go first? Must you just go to the Supreme Court? Yabua versus J.H. Mensa. The Supreme Court made this point very clear. Article 99. You go to the lower court before you can come to the High Court. Because in, in Yabua versus uh, J.B. Dankwa, eh, I say J.B. Dankwa. Yabua versus J.H. Mensa. The fact was that the J.H. Mensa, who was a member of parliament, I don't know whether Sunyai East or West, one of them, a resident said that J.H. Mensa was not residing in the constituency that he's representing. And that he rather come from, or he, he, he resides in the other one. 
I don't know whether which one the east or west. I don't. Can you tell me? Sunyani East. Sunyani East, exactly. So the resident said that he was from Sunyani West, and not Sunyani East. And the Supreme Court made this statement, dealing with Article 99, that you go to the lower court first, and that was just that Tugba was saying that it is the High Court that has jurisdiction. Now, then you add Article 115, the last time I made that point here clear, Article 115, where it says that... A person who sits or votes in Parliament, knowing or having reasonable grounds for knowing, that is not entitled to do so, to do so... I read Article 115. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. 115, okay, okay sorry. You're not reading Article 115. Okay. So it says, um, there shall be freedom of speech. Okay, yeah. Debate and proceedings uh -huh. in Parliament. We looked at that last week. Last week. And I said we, did, we dealt with it here last week. What has that got to do with it? The point is that the Supreme Court could have... Because for, from what the lawyers are saying, uh, the, once the Supreme Court is dealing with this, it, it surmounts or overshadows whatever it is. Because no, it has the... I am saying that the, the intrusion, the Supreme Court's intrusion into Parliament... But, but the Supreme Court has the right. No, no. Because this is let a very contentious you, Let me tell you something. And I'll get to the point where you will be talking about how do we deal with this matter. This book, and I was surprised that the Chief Justice was saying that in the application to recuse, to recuse, to recuse, to, for the judge to recuse himself. Justice go. The, Supreme, the, uh, uh, the Chief Justice said that it's a constitutional matter and not a political matter. Every lawyer knows that this constitution is both a legal and a political document. This, this, this document is both a legal and a political document. And who doesn't know that? And who doesn't know that the matter we are dealing with is to benefit either the NDC or the MPP in Parliament? Who doesn't know that? Are you saying that the Supreme Court should have uh, taken that into consideration? And ask the man to recuse himself. Irrespective of the substantive matter that was before it. The substantive matters, he must also recuse himself. This one, and there's a substantive matter. So, let me tell you, the solution is not in what we are doing in, 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 in court and let the court stay its hands off. This, this document, I've told you, is both legal and political. There are some issues emanating from this constitution which you can use legal means to deal with. There are some matters emanating from this constitution which you can use a political means to deal with. This particular one can be dealt with by political means. And yesterday, you saw the uh, uh, Council of Elders. Council of State. Council of State. You saw the Council of Eight meeting with the Speaker. You heard uh, Chairman Saboso saying that if he were... He didn't say he were. He said what was the norm. What was the norm? Was that so the, the he, leaders no, will, no. Will, would have resolved this... Exactly. ...in chambers exactly. before it comes to the plenary. Does that buttress my point of using political means to deal with this matter? Are you saying that the Supreme Court should have taken note of that? Note of that. There are some matters when they happen, Parliament has the capacity within itself to deal with it. Now, we, we've gone to court. The court has ruled against Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, too, adjourn the matter, silly die or silly day. Some say silly die, some say silly day. Depending on which country. Which country you come from. <laughs> is that a silly die or silly day? Why and and then the, 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 what it means is that. Indefinitely. <laughs> now, Speaker 2 is within his right, as it were, to adjourn Sine Day. Hmm. Now, but this order um, means that no, 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 it has overriding consideration. You, you don't understand. No, okay, but me, I'm not. You understand. I'm, I'm, not, I'm no. saying that the court has spoken. Mr. Speaker 2 okay. has adjourned and he has spoken. What he has also done is within the law. Uh, yeah. hmm. You people. You understand? Now, let's assume that we're going to lose a legal, legal, legal uh, uh, platform mm. to deal with the matter. When Speaker returns oh. mm -hmm. and calls Parliament, mm. the NDC too mm. walks away. Speaker says that I don't have the numbers to take the issues. Are you? Are you? Now, I'm telling you that. I'm telling you why we cannot use legal means. Because there are, because there are that human beings the, involved who the, have to take exactly. political decisions. Just as how you, you couldn't use the court to deal with the Yaya, the bomb matter, and to, we deal with it 
culturally and traditionally. I'm saying that the court should stay away. Even issue, there's a court, substantive legal issue. Even in Boku, there's a court. the human so beings themselves. The court, I want to say is that, and then everybody hear this. The court can make pronouncement, but would the human beings agree to it? Mm. And I've given examples. Now, if the, the, the Supreme Court, uh, Mr. Speaker, calls Parliament back, and NDC works out, which is also legitimate. Are you saying the NDC work out? I am asking you, I'm telling you, during the MPP work out, and when the MPP work out, there was a decision, were we able to take a decision? No. That's why the <laughs> agenda took place. NDC too works out. The MPP alone cannot do anything. So, the point is this. Let us use the political uh, uh, solution mm. to deal with this matter and leave the legal solution. Mm. The legal solution will not deal with this matter effectively. Okay.